Last time on Combi Life, we were continuing the build of our vintage bus, Boomerang, which we were intending to drive around the world. We were lucky enough to spend the week with Skinner Classics in their world-class V-Dove restoration facility in Northern California, where we stripped our combi naked, blew off the years of desert dust, and sprayed on our new expedition colors. So now that Boomerang looks the part, in this episode, we're going to make sure that he acts the part. pick up the story heading back south on our way to the next step in our combi evolution. And we sure did feel good with the sun on our faces riding in Boomerang. I mean look at him, how good does he look? But looking good doesn't really help to drive to Australia. Windscreen wipers have stopped working, the lights have stopped working too so Right now, our biggest problem is this mess of wires under here, which desperately needs attention. Half the time, Boomerang didn't want to go. When he did, there were constant problems. And when he stopped, the problems only got worse. This is... It's in the door. I've got to say, it is currently impossible to drive this vehicle anywhere reliably or safely. We've been living in Boomerang for just a couple of weeks and it's utterly miserable. There is no way that we can drive it around the world like this. So we're headed to Los Angeles to see two giants of the V-Dub world, our new friends Wolfsburg West, who are leaders in V-Dub restoration, and our old friends at Rancho Performance Transaxles, who are going to tell us exactly what we can do for our two-wheel drive bus so we have less chance of getting stuck off the beaten track. First stop is Wolfsburg West. Outside, it's just another huge LA industrial warehouse. Inside, oh boy, it's paradise. So Wolfsburg West started 30 years ago and has now gone from 1,000 square feet to about 30,000 square feet. But we're always testing the stuff before it comes out and again on our own cars because we drive them, we own them, or at least the majority of us do. And, and that's the great part. We certainly strive very hard to get the best quality part that we can get and there's no reason to make a bad part because there's other places that do that. Those of you that have followed our previous adventure from South America to Alaska will know that our combi was plagued with troubles for over five years. When I was deep in Central America, it was almost impossible to find quality parts and quality parts are absolutely essential if you want to keep your Volkswagen alive. Come on. Wolfsburg West is the gold standard for V-Dub restoration supplies. That is not a secret in North America, but I didn't discover them until 2012 when I was tackling my first solo engine build under a tree in Panama. If I hadn't filmed it, I wouldn't believe that I could have found myself in such a pickle, but those were the days when I was learning the hard way and Murphy was my co-pilot. A simple broken fan belt, sorry, make that two back-to-back -back broken fan belts, led to blown engine number five. I mean, Murphy wouldn't even let me turn the van around without causing me to slip backwards into the ditch. At that time, I had one photocopied V-Dub manual and approximately 30 minutes a day of extremely slow internet access to learn how to put my engine back together. In Panama, there were no quality parts available. I mean, I literally had to sand my piston rings to get them to fit back into my engine. 
At that time I found the website of Wolfsburg West, which has these awesome exploder diagrams of the combi, which was a huge help in identifying the parts that I was missing from my bus. I almost ordered those parts from Wolfsburg West, but I didn't. If I'd have ordered the right parts at the right time, I wouldn't have got stranded for a further three months. But back then, I didn't understand the importance of quality parts, and I had to learn the hard way. And now, six years later, I'm stood inside the warehouse of Wolfsburg West, and I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. Unbelievable the size of this place. I know it's just a warehouse. I know that it might not be that exciting, but this is a Volkswagen mecca. You can bring so many buses back from the dead with all of this stuff. So this is our chrome testing machine that we have here because certainly chrome is very popular with restoration cars and we're a restoration quality shop. It's metal, ultimately it's gonna rust no matter how good the chrome is. But we certainly try to get the best chrome that we can so that your car, your bumpers and parts will last longer. So in order for us to ensure that, we salt test the products. Uh, I think like one hour in the salt tank represents like four months in, in, in the rain or whatever. It's a great ratio. And so two or three days in this tank and we can really look and see how good the quality of the chrome is. What are, the, what are these uh, seat pads made out of? Coconut fiber and glue. I don't know why yeah. they call it horsehair. It's kind of a sarcastic name. So but that's the original, what it was exactly originally. Exactly what Volkswagen used, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember we had the, that's the ones that, um, in Capito we had these and when we had the fire, the smoke got in them. We had to and it was them like, yeah, we couldn't get it out. Some but people yeah, say that it gave their car the original smell that it had ah. when they first bought their car. Mm. Mm. That's what a Volkswagen should smell like. <laughs> it's just rat's nest material waiting to happen, yeah. right? I mean, 20 years it's going to be down there on the floor. We were astonished at the amount of Volkswagen parts stored in this warehouse. And for us, it was exactly what we needed to fix a few issues on our own combi. We sell a lot of rubber products. It's good for ultraviolet, this, that, and the other. And it's just a good quality rubber. And we haven't had any come back for crackings uh, or splittings or, you know, any issues. That was pretty bad. All right. Look how bad these seals are. This is 45 years old. No doubt these are original and the quartzite sun has definitely taken its toll on this rubber. Unbelievable. Uh, Don't scratch the paint job, man. Yeah. So we went about replacing the rest of Boomerang's dodgy rubber. We'd already replaced all of the window seals with Wolfsburg's West rubber the week before when we were with Skinner Classics. Now we're completing the job with the doors. No more draft, no more leak. <sighs> nice warm home. Yeah. We have brought Boomerang here today because next week we'll be meeting the team who are building us our expedition engine, the one that will take us across the planet. But before we can do that, we absolutely must resolve the wiring problems that are plaguing Boomerang. Wiring harnesses, well we make our own wiring harnesses and we need one for a 73 bus right now, so you're at the right place at the right time. Wow. It's a bit of a nightmare. So yeah, well, we got, it's, we got the ECU tucked right here. It was a carbureted car originally and then somebody put in factory fuel injection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tony's right. During our recent desert resurrection of Boomerang, we did indeed pull out a carbureted engine and replace it with a fuel injection engine. Why? Because next week, we're hoping to install a modern, more powerful engine. The one that will hopefully take us around the world. But that engine will need to rely on good wires. And ours are 45 years old. Over a long term, either the, the connectors will get uh, brittle and they'll break. They'll start to snap off the push-on connectors. You get resistance built up between the connector and the, um, the mating uh, connector and it'll, you know, cause issues. Our Expedition engine that we're installing next week is going to be awesome. But even though it will be brand new, it would still break down if we didn't have a solid foundation of wiring underneath. This is Boomerang's central nervous system we're talking about. It is being totally ripped out and replaced. And we can't begin to tell you how much reassurance that gives us for the roads ahead. This, this is like investment in our future. So when we're broken down in India, we uh right absolutely it's easier for us to troubleshoot yeah yeah everything's going to be as it was originally <sighs> and and with a 
a, you know, a, a wiring diagram, you're going to be able to look at that and say, well, this is the color of this wire and this is where it should be going to. And, and um, you know, hopefully might find it much easier to troubleshoot. Uh, that will be make a huge difference, Tony. Yeah. A hu I can't even begin to tell you how easy, how much of a difference that's going to make. Yeah, when you've got this stuff going on, it just mm. needs to be cleaned up. But, you know, we'll put in a new harness and it'll be done and it'll be right. And All right, let's do it. Yeah. Our time for this restoration is running out fast and we only have a few weeks left before we have to get Boomerang to New York City. So with such little time, we've been extremely fortunate to receive help from such capable hands. Before we left, we did our spares shopping for the expedition. Driving a classic vehicle around the world is no small task. Having the very best in spare parts is absolutely essential for what we're about to do. So we made the most of being here. Something tells me that we're gonna be yearning for Wolfsburg West in the not too distant future. Whilst we were in LA, we took the opportunity to head across town to visit one of the heroes of Combi Life. I am Mike Herbert. Basically, I work at Rancho Performance Transaxles. I build, you know, performance transaxles for, you know, numerous VWs and stuff like that. Some of you may remember a couple years earlier, and a few thousand miles to the north, our first day arriving in Alaska. It had taken multiple years to get there from South America, so it was definitely cause for celebration all right. However, literally in the first town that we came to, we had a major transmission failure on the combi, just 1,000 miles short of our finish line at the Arctic Ocean. Unable to find a replacement transmission anywhere, and believe me, we looked hard, we were forced to abandon the combi until a solution could be found. That solution was presented by this guy, Mike, from Rancho Performance Transaxles. He was able to build us a custom transaxle that not only fit, but actually outperformed the one that we had from the factory. That wasn't the end of the Alaska saga. Oh my God. I literally cannot believe what has just happened. But we did manage to overcome all of those problems and get our combi back on the road. We realized our Arctic dream and swam in the Arctic Ocean, and none of that would have been possible without the help from Team Rancho. We were so impressed with the build quality of that transmission that since then, Rancho Performance Transaxles have been our final drive lead consultants for this upcoming expedition. And they have been busy putting together something special for us. Yeah, basically when, you, when you're, we're doing this gearbox is to basically make it fresh so when you go out on a long journey you're going to have something that's going to last it's going to go the distance I mean, you guys plan on driving many miles and you don't want to go out with something that's worn out you want fresh stock transaxle then then you can uh, add components to beef it up with what, what we did with yours was to change it to a newer style and a, a later model transaxle you need something I would figure a little beefier this is the main shaft bearing that would typically could typically be in your transmission it's not very strong I mean when you're talking about using first gear a lot and you're gonna be you know going over rough terrain and stuff it can cause a few issues you know it could wear it out sooner or, or damage it this bearing is from an earlier transmission. It has a much thicker outer casing, and it could take a lot more abuse. So, the, I mean, that doesn't just slot in, right? You have to- I like, have to machine the case. Machine I have to put it. it in the mill, and I have to bore open and actually you know, bore it and press it in. Thank so, you for doing that. You're welcome. What we're basically doing is bringing it back to spec, or even better. And also, you know, within reason, doing some upgrades because some of the terrain that you're going to go over is going to be kind of pretty brutal. So I'd like to suggest you do is putting like a limited slip in it because you will, you know, come across sandy terrain or muddy terrain or something that's not going to be, you know, even or, you know, difficult to get across. And that, that torque biasing differential would definitely do a big improvement on your traction for getting across rough terrain. This is one of the biggest upgrade options for us, which will directly impact how we live and travel in the combi. 
all combis, like the vast majority of two-wheel drive vehicles, have what's called an open differential. That basically allows wheels to turn at different speeds to enable smooth cornering. But there is a big downside of this. When you have an open differential, when you apply power in a slippery service, it generally tries to drive one wheel and the other tire will stay. It slips and you can't go anywhere. If you're stuck in mud, you'll be stuck. Anyone who's been stuck in a two-wheel drive vehicle will know exactly that feeling, where one wheel does nothing whilst the other one spins wildly and just digs you further into trouble. If you go into a limited slip type of a differential, a torque biasing or a clutch style, you know, LSD, it, differenti it, it distributes the power equally to both wheels and allows you to get over uneven terrain or, or slippery terrain a lot easier. With a torque biasing differential, we'll be able to get further off the beaten track than was previously possible, which will help us find better and safer locations to set up base camp off grid. I mean, with your transaxle, we're gonna be going with a torque biasing differential made by Peloquin uh, differentials. And he makes a really high quality piece. We prefer to use his because of the quality that he puts into making them. It is obvious how much care Mike has put into building us this custom transmission to match the needs of this round the world expedition. And we are unbelievably stoked to be tackling this journey with a Rancho Performance Transaxle. With each passing week, we are getting stronger. Boomerang is getting stronger. And it's starting to look like the impossible might just be possible. Next week, we're going to install this transmission and we're going to be meeting the team at the pinnacle of VW Engineering who are tasked with building us the most reliable expedition engine imaginable. This is something that I've been waiting a long time for and we are so excited. But that is a story for next time. <laughs>